So in reaction to the recent incidents that occurred in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas, there is a new proposed gun control bill which will impose a 1,000% national tax on so-called assault weapons. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think a firearms tax is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. So if you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, SDI might be a good option for you. To find out more about SDI, you can visit the website linked down below. And thank you again, SDI, for sponsoring this video. Also, I mentioned that you can now pick up channel merch. You can pick up this shirt. We have this one in two different colors, and then we have two other designs. So if you're interested, you can look at those and check those out by using the link down below. So like I said in the intro, in reaction to the recent incidents in Buffalo, Nuvaldi, Texas, there have been major calls for more gun control at a state level and also at the federal level. In prior videos, we talked about how the state of New York introduced a bill which would mirror the Texas abortion law in a way that would allow private lawsuits against gun manufacturers. Then we talked about a new federal bill that was introduced to require a federal license that everyone must have if they want to purchase and possess a firearm. Then the state of New York passed multiple bills, which would include a body armor ban, a ghost gun ban, and it would also increase the age and the purchasing requirement for someone to be able to purchase a firearm from 18 to 20, all the way up to 21 years of age. Well, now House Democrats are introducing a bill that would hit AR-15s, AKs, and similar semi-automatic centerfire rifles with a 1,000% tax. This bill is being proposed by Representative Don Beyer out of Virginia. Representative Beyer is a member of the Tax Writing House Ways and Means Committee, and he intends to introduce a bill with a 1,000% excise tax on the sale of all so-called assault weapons. In a press release, he stated, what is intended to do is provide another creative pathway to actually make some sensible gun control happen. We think that a 1,000% fee on assault weapons is just the kind of restrictive measure that creates enough fiscal impact to qualify for reconciliation. So at the end there, you heard him state that he believes the 1,000% excise tax on so-called assault weapons has enough physical impact to qualify for reconciliation. What does that actually mean? Well, bills described as reconciliation bills can pass the Senate by a simple majority of 51 votes, or 50 votes plus the vice president as a tiebreaker if needed. This type of procedure expedites the passage of certain budgetary legislation through the Senate and can override the filibuster rules in the Senate if needed. Currently, traditional rules require a 60 vote supermajority to break a Senate filibuster, but a reconciliation bill only requires a simple majority. Budget reconciliation bills can deal with spending, revenue, and the federal debt limit, and the Senate can pass one bill per year affecting each one of those subjects. Another requirement is that for a bill to be qualifying as a reconciliation, its provisions cannot be extraneous under the Byrd rule. The 1,000% excise tax on so-called assault weapons likely runs in contrast to a few of these requirements under the Byrd rule and therefore would face a lot of opposition on its legitimacy as a reconciliation bill. On top of that, Congress does not frequently pass reconciliation bills and averages only about one per year. Therefore, something as drastic as a politically polarizing 1,000% tax on all so-called assault weapons would be a rare passage under a reconciliation, but they're still going to try it. Byer's deputy chief of staff stated that Congressman Byer has seen action to prevent gun violence obstructed by Senate Republicans using the filibuster after these horrific incidents. This legislation represents an effort to put a new option on the table for those who believe that gun safety reforms are urgently needed to save lives. Now, if by chance this bill were to pass, what would it do? Well, it would impose what is known as an excise tax on the sale of so-called assault weapons. Excise taxes are taxes that are imposed on various goods, services, and activities. Such taxes may be imposed on the manufacturer, retailer, or on consumers, depending on what the specific tax is and the structure of the bill. This excise tax would be placed on the manufacturers and retailers, but the tax has a direct trickle-down impact on consumers, and that fact is actually being recognized by the representative uh, buyer when he's stating that this would pretty much be a prohibitive tax on the consumer. So for example, AR-15s can cost anywhere between $500 to maybe $2,000. That means a 1,000% tax on those types of firearms would add anywhere between $5,000 to $20,000 to their final sales price. And by the time the consumer got to purchase those firearms, they may be paying even more than that because the retailer is also gonna wanna make a profit on those sales. 
because they got to make up not only all of those taxes that they're having to pay, but they still have to make a profit as well. As you can see, this type of taxing scheme is absolutely concerning. First, it takes the form of not a complete ban or it says it's not a complete ban on the purchase of these types of rifles, but it aims essentially to price most people out of the exercise of their rights and to price them out of from being able to purchase these types of firearms. The average person will not want to spend $5,000 all the way up to $20,000 to buy one single rifle. Also, those of lower socioeconomic standings and, and rungs within our society will be completely unable to purchase these firearms because it's just going to be so completely expensive to do so. And essentially what's going to happen is they're going to decide that they don't want to purchase firearms because it's just so cost prohibitive, but that's what this bill really wants. So this bill is not a complete ban on so-called assault weapons, but it effectively is trying to price people out of the purchase of these rifles by making it so expensive. Now under this bill, government entities, law enforcement, uh, local and state and federal are exempted from having to pay this tax. So average citizens will have to pay this tax and will have to suffer these insane price increases, but the government won't and the law enforcement officers won't because they are the ones who the government actually wants to have these arms, but they don't want anyone else to have them. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, what type of firearms would be impacted by this tax? Well, this tax says that it includes a tax on all so-called assault weapons, and it defines them under a different bill that's been proposed in the past. Essentially, it's going to mirror the California legal definition of so-called assault weapons. It defines such firearms as military style assault weapons with a magazine that is not a fixed ammunition magazine and has one or more military characteristics, including a pistol grip, a forward grip, a barrel shroud, a threaded barrel, or a folding or telescoping stock. It would also tax 205 specifically named make and models of various rifles. Again, this is very similar to what the state of California did with their definition of so-called assault weapons, where they have the Roberti Roos make and model list that is defined as so-called assault weapons. And then they also have a characteristic list under California Penal Code 30515, where they say if a rifle is configured in this specific way, then it is defined as a so-called assault weapon. Now, these types of excise taxes typically go to things like public safety grants and causes. So for example, California has been trying to pass an ammunition excise tax for the last few years. That excise tax would be taken, paid and given by the government to various gun safety researchers and advocacy groups. I would see this bill doing likely the same thing. So with these types of bills, what they try to do is not only tax your right out of existence, but then they will try to use that money to further attack your rights by giving it to these gun control groups. So that's just a quick rundown of what is going on with this 1000% tax on AR-15s and other rifles that you guys were asking me about. In my opinion, I think this bill doesn't have a chance to pass, especially not in the form that it's currently in and being discussed. I could see something with a more modest tax, having a chance to maybe pass the House or maybe the Senate as well. Something like maybe a 10% tax or something a lot smaller, but this 1000% tax uh, would completely price people out of being able to purchase and acquire these types of firearms. And it's essentially a backdoor ban on these types of AR-15 rifles, AKs, other semi-automatic centerfire rifles. And I think in this form, it won't pass. However, some other bills that are being discussed like red flag laws do have a chance to pass maybe the House and then the Senate as well. There are murmurs that the Republicans in the Senate may vote in favor of various red flag laws that are being proposed. So I highly recommend that you reach out to your representatives in the House and the Senate. Let them know that you oppose not only this 1000% AR tax, but also that you oppose all gun control bills, including any red flag law that is being discussed as well. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. I'm going to try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like the video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel algorithm rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to build Barm Scholars and the station will be maintained Barm Scholars.